that happen. So, uh, Good morning, Trinity. I think it's only because of the Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Lutheran. Pastor. A lot of wonderful things going on here. Praise Lord, play, praise God from whom all blessings flow, said the newsletter. And yes, it is truly a wonderful thing. Next Sunday at 4 p.m., we will be installing our new senior pastor, Pastor Callison. Something to be truly grateful for. Our prayers have been answered. The following two Sundays, after Pastor Callison is installed on October 2nd, the church is going to undergo a large renovation and we will be holding services in the gym. The gym services will include a 6 p.m. on Saturday, an 8 a.m. on Sunday, and an 11 a.m. on Sunday. The 9.30 service will become a time for the entire congregation to join together in fellowship for the first third of it or so, and then Bible study with our new pastor. A wonderful way to get to know our new pastor a little better, so we would love everyone to be in attendance. Again, it'll be Saturday at 6, Sunday at 8 a.m., and Sunday at 11 a.m., beginning the 8th. The 8th and the 15th. After that, we'll be back into the, the uh, hall here. So please rise and join us as we begin our service of worship in prayer, song, and scripture. Ancient of Days. One, two, two, four. be seated. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. That was a jubilant good morning. Uh, we just are filled with so much excitement, are we not, as we just anticipate uh, and give thanks to God for sending us a senior pastor, and, and so we are just elated and jubilant and we're going to shout it out for years to come that uh, God has blessed us so much. You know, each time we come and stand before a holy God, we are humbled as we acknowledge our unholiness, our <coughs> sinfulness, 
and that there is absolutely nothing that I can do of my own that would make my standing before God any better. You know, um, our readings for today, lift that up. We'll be soon hearing the Old Testament reading. But it is a plea from the Lord for people to return to the Lord so that he might have compassion and give us his abundant pardon. Our gospel lesson is the story about the workers in the vineyard. Some going early in the morning, some starting at nine, some starting at noon, some starting at three or even at five. But the workers in the vineyard all received the same abundant blessing. God's grace. God's mercy. And that's what he's offering to us again today. You know, if we were to look at the appointed psalm for today, the question is, what do I have that I can render to the Lord for all his abundant blessings to me? And the psalmist says, all I have is the cup of salvation which God has already given me. That's all I have to lift up to the Lord. Acknowledging and recognizing that God is doing it all to claim us as his children. As you have come today in your humility confessing your own sins May I assure you by the grace of God that your sins are completely forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
to bring up our reader right now. First lesson is from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second lesson is from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14 and 19 through 30. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard, and to all the rest of my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers, for the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out to be for my deliverance. As it is my eager ex expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death, for me to live in Christ is Christ, and to die is gain. For I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that in me you may have an ample cause to glory in Jesus Christ because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction but of your salvation and that from God, for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw. I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. I stand in your midst as a reminder that it is Jesus Christ himself who is present and is speaking with us again today. The Gospel readings are a continuation of Matthew's theme which carries throughout his entire Gospel about the Kingdom of Heaven is here and we hear another of the Gospel uh, kingdom of heaven parables the gospel from Matthew chapter 20 beginning at verse 1 Jesus said for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day he sent them into the vineyard and going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. 
going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, Well, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last, up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. You now, when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree to work for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. My apologies, I neglected to mention the blue and yellow cards. Uh, the yellow cards at this point may be quite a bit more important. So if you have something burdening you, troubling your heart, and you want to send it up, and the congregation will bear your prayers with you, uh, an elder is going to collect the yellow cards during this hymn. Shining like the 
share God's peace <laughs> and we will have some announcements to follow. A nice hug, a warm handshake, a good smile. Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I encourage you to turn to your pew Bible. We're going to be looking at uh, a text for today. It is not one of our gospel lessons or one of our lessons today, but it's from John chapter 1, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 35. But while you're looking for that, I'm going to ask a question. Did everybody get a worship folder? Anybody kind of sneak in and didn't get one? Or come in the side door and you have no worship folder? Who needs a worship folder? Oh, I knew somebody did. And how about my uh, worship team over here? You know, I encourage you to take notes. Got them up there? Hi there. Got one? Okay, good. 
Anyone else? From the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 35. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, that's John the Baptist, and he looked at Jesus as he was walking by and he said, Behold the Lamb of God! The two disciples who were with John the Baptist turned and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and he said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to Jesus, Rabbi, teacher, where are you staying? And Jesus said to them, Come and see. So they came and they saw where he was staying and they stayed with him all that day for it was about 10 o'clock in the morning. One of the two who heard John speaking followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first found his own brother Simon and he said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. And he brought Peter to Jesus. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, So you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip, and he said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets has written, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. This is our text. You know, as we made our confession earlier, we acknowledge the fact that we stand as sinful people before a holy God and that all we have to render to the Lord is the cup of salvation which he has already given to each of us. Because we have nothing of ourselves but only his own salvation his own grace and mercy to lift up because of what he has done for us. Oh, our Lord is so generous as he welcomes us to himself, as he sees us as sheep without a shepherd and has compassion on us. And he comes down to us day after day and through his word. He says, come and see. Come and follow me into my own sheep fold. You know, this sermon for today is a continuation. It's kind of part two of what we did last week. And so you'll find in your worship folder, place for notes, but you also have five invitations for Pastor Callison's uh, installation service at four, and five envelopes that you can mail to people that you have been praying about that can come this week. You know, we are going to be inviting as many friends as we can. And so if you need more invitations, there'll be more in the back for you. And if you need stamps, I've got some up here on the altar. I'll even give you the stamps. We are inviting people to come and see Jesus. That's it. That's as simple as it is. Come and see. Or behold, there's Jesus. You know, once you have seen Jesus, you've got to tell somebody. And that's what we're going to do. Last week, we kind of looked at a congregational goal. And this group, I think, said, you know, we could have 500 people in here. And then I said, well, how many come at Easter? How many come at Christmas? 700 people. And so we're preparing for having video. People can see it in classrooms. If we have so many people here that they'll all be able to participate, 
and then go over to the fellowship dinner with us. Last week, we encouraged you to begin building bridges and think about those people that would be most ready to receive your invitation. And so we ask you to think in three groups of people and to make a list of those people. Write them down on your worship folder last week. How many of you brought your worship folder from last week? Okay, well, I got the same response last night and the same response this morning at 8. Uh, nobody brought it. So I'm assuming it's still hanging on your bathroom mirror to remind you to pray for all these people. We live under grace. Thank you, Lord. So, on your worship folder, get out your pencil, you have an opportunity to begin writing down these names once again that you wrote down. Invite family and friends who trust you. Invite people you know that might be in a crisis situation and uncertainty looking for hope. Invite people you know who have had previous church involvement, but maybe not so anymore. Where are the people that sat in these pews two years ago, three years ago? Let's invite them back. You see, next week, we're going to be focusing on welcoming all of our guests for the installation of our new pastor, but we're going to spend time now to talk about how to do the how of inviting. How do we do it? Well, I call it following the very simple Jesus principle or John the Baptist principle or Andrew and Philip principle. John the Baptist said five words. That's all he did. He saw Jesus walking by and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the message was received, and two of John's disciples turned around and immediately began following Jesus. You see, Jesus was there with John the Baptist and guided. It was Jesus who was speaking through John. Andrew says to his brother Peter, We have found the Messiah. Five words. That's it. We have found the Messiah. That's all you have to say. And then he brought Peter to Jesus. That's as simple as it is. Jesus also uses the same principle. He says to Andrew and Philip and the other disciple, Come and follow me. Come. That's what an invitation is. It's saying, Come. Yes, Philip found Nathaniel as well in our text. And he said, Nathaniel, we found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. It's Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Come and see. That's as simple as an invitation is. Jesus was there with them. And He's just pointing out Jesus. That's what we are doing. And I want you to know that it is Jesus that is going to be speaking through you and that Jesus is with you. You know, think about this. That it's Jesus that is actually calling, come and you will see. Jesus is the one that's doing the work. And you've been praying this week for people, I pray, that will be receptive to receiving this invitation. You see, as you have been praying for these people, God has been actively preparing their hearts for you to receive your invitation. Just think for a minute about the excitement we're feeling right now. But you know what that excitement is all about? It's about what it means to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I want to go back to our text in John 1, one more time. Ready? You can open it back up if you'd like. 
The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon. They were family. And he told him, that's an invitation. We have found the Messiah. And then he brings his brother Peter to Jesus. And the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee and find Philip. And he says, follow me. And Philip found Nathanael, his friend, and he told him, we have found the one that Moses was writing about in the Old Testament and uh, for uh, the prophets. And it's Jesus of Nazareth. Come and see. Look who's invited. People they know closely. God invites you to start with the people you know. They're not the only ones we're inviting, but that's where we can start with real people, people that trust you. So I pray that you will be going out this week and going and telling. You see, it's all about Jesus. Would you repeat that? It is all about Jesus. We're focused on extending friend-friendly invitations for people to see Jesus. That's what these invitations are all about. Well, let's talk about two ways you can do it. I'm going to call the first one the indirect method. And that's a non-scary kind of a way. All you have to do is send a text message, an email, send a card, call somebody on the phone. You don't even have to see them face to face, but you're extending to them an invitation. Write on your invitation, will you come as a guest? I'll check back with you later this week. Offer to pick them up. Offer to meet him out by the door. Offer to meet him in the parking lot. Be there to welcome the people you have invited. If you're mailing cards, you'll want to try to get them in the mail tomorrow or no later than Tuesday. But most importantly, pray for the people that you are sending an invitation to. If you need more than the ones you were given, the ushers have more in the back. And toward the middle of the week, you'll want to give them a call to see if they've received your invitation and remind them to RSVP, as uh, who was telling us before. Well, maybe it was at the early service. Uh, we don't always have a good reputation for RSVPing. We just show up. But if you can RSVP, it helps the cook to know how many thousands of people to have food for and how many tables and chairs we need. What a great event we are looking forward to. And what a day it will be as members of your own family and your friends gather around and sit with you in worship and go over to the fellowship hall together as we celebrate with our friends that we are seeing Jesus again. All right. Just a few thoughts about welcoming guests. I could preach this next Sunday, but no, i got other things to tell you next week. So uh, God speaks to us. And so just a few ideas about treating guests well. I'm going to call it the 10-5 rule. You know, it's kind of a, the whole tell receptionist, receptionist kind of plan. So when people walk in, and if you know them by name, when they're 10 feet away, you're going to say, Hi, John. It's so good to see you. And when you get within five feet, you're going to shake hands. You're going to call them by name. Everybody, all your guests that are coming, they have names. Use their names. That's not my best gift. But I'm working on it. So that when I see people, I call them by name. Yes, as part of our procedure for uh, welcoming people. You want to be with them. You want to walk with them. You want to sit with them. You want to show them where the bathroom is because they might not know. So you can escort them there. You can take them 
to the fellowship, to the gym, so you know. You know, I think I skipped the indirect, I mean the direct method. Uh, another way to do this is by seeing someone in person. I call that the direct method. Um, extending an invitation. It's my favorite way of doing it, by the way. Uh, when you sit down with somebody at the kitchen table and you just talk about what God's doing in your life, provides an opportunity to pray, but then also to invite that person to join us. You see, I've learned that the direct method is most effective. If I just put an announcement up here that says I need Sunday school teachers, uh, I might not get any. Maybe I get one. But if I go to 10 people and I look them in the eye and I say, oh, I need more teachers for Sunday school, would you prayerfully consider being a teacher to guide and form and shape the lives of these children? Most likely, I'm going to get a yes answer. Same with your extending invitations. All right, we're ready. Go and have fun. I've done that as your pastor. I hope you can tell. But go and have fun. Your training is done. You just need to do the ask. You got the names, right? Come on, shake your head. You got names to invite, right? Good. Now... You've also got an indirect method of doing it and a direct method of inviting. So let's go to work. Take your invitations. Write the person's name on it or you can put it on the back. Make a little note. Say, will you join us and be our guest? Sign it. I'll check back with you later in the week. Write a personal note on it and then follow up. And then, most of all, we need to pray. That's what's going to move people, and that's what's going to move me. It's God speaking to me through prayer and my conversation with Him. And then as you pray each day for the people you invite, would you give thanks to God? Praise God for what God is doing here in our midst, in my own life, in my own heart. So, I'd like to pray right now and I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have sent us your Son to redeem us, to save us. And Jesus invites us with just four or five simple words. Come. Come and follow me. And Andrew invites Peter the same way. And then he brings his brother to see Jesus. And Philip. Philip goes and sees his best friend. And he says, come and see, O Lord. We know that you walk with us. And we know that it's you that's doing the invitations. And we know it's you that's inviting people to celebrate the installation of Pastor Callison this week. So Lord, may your spirit move people's hearts. May they be touched and receive our invitations to come and celebrate and see Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jesus' sake. Yes, this is a continuation of last week. Well, we were reminded again that it is God's plan to use us to invite and connect people with Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I want you to say it again. It is all about Jesus. When we come to worship here every Saturday or Sunday, it is all about 
Jesus, when we come up here and receive the Lord's Supper today, it is all about Jesus. When you invite others to come, it is all about and Jesus. And the special installation service next week at 4 o'clock, it is all about Jesus. <coughs> Now may the peace of God, <clears throat> which far surpasses all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, the offering will be collected. Join us in song if you like. <coughs> of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all your children, Lord, for all who serve, we pray that you would remind us that it is only by grace alone that we are included in your kingdom and privileged to serve you. Lord, in your mercy. For those who will receive the Lord's Supper this day, that by God's grace and power, they would forsake sinful ways and thoughts, returning to the Lord, and that in receiving Christ's body and blood, they would taste with joy God's abundant pardon. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we pray for a strong bond of love between the people of Trinity and Pastor Doug and Desiree Callison. Place a hedge of protection around this entire family of faith, keeping them beyond the reach of the evil one. Refresh and renew each of us to our baptism. Study of your word through our regular worship to celebrating our oneness with one another and coming to your altar to receive your own body and blood. 
allow our relationship to bear witness unto you so that our mutual work and ministry may always glorify you, bearing fruit that will last even unto eternity. Help us not only to love, but also to forgive, so that we might always live in your peace. Help us each to love you with our whole hearts, and help us to love one another as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Elder Mike will bring your own special prayer request to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for healing and restoration of good health for Denny, hospitalized from complications from lung cancer treatment, and also for Ed and Eric and Lynn, Randy, Rachel, Valerie, Bill, David, Claude, and Jacqueline, also suffering from cancer. We pray for healing and recovery for Dolly, hospitalized for a fall, and for others hospitalized and with other health concerns, for Ed, for Jim, for Kelly, for Patricia, Corey, Herman, Jerry, Eric, Hazel, Gordon, Richard, Les, Linda, Hudson, Jean, and Maureen. And Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessings and healing for those with other needs, for Summer, for Jenny, for strength and comfort for the Wilson family, for St. Mark's Lutheran Church, for Shane Ludwig, for Dan Dixon family, and those affected by Hurricane Harvey. And Heavenly Father, we pray for peace and comfort for the family and friends of Janine Herndon. Heavenly Father, for all the ladies that have not been at Tuesday morning Bible study, we miss you and hope all is well with you. May God bless you all. And Heavenly Father, we offer praise and thanksgiving for Andrea, who received a cancer-free di- uh, report, and for praise and for successful treatment for Sylvester. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now join in praying together the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Come, the table is now ready.
you to rise. Then may the body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and to life everlasting. Go in peace and share this good news with everyone. It's all about Jesus. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste 
of the feast to come in which you will forever be the host waiting upon us. O oh Lord, that's how it already is as you pour out upon us every spiritual blessing under heaven. Receive our praise and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Join us as we close. <laughs> and serve the Lord.